All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is TDS Darth Wage back at you with another video yet again. And in this video, I'm basically going to be podcasting with uh, Ro Zero, or I'll just call him Ro. And uh, yeah, yeah. would you like to announce who's in here with you? What'd you say? What'd you say? I said, would you like to announce who's in here with you? Oh, uh, that's fine. Uh, we're joined here by my brother. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. All right, so how's it going, Ro? What's going on with you? Uh, it's going good. Uh, like I said, I've been hosting tournaments and stuff, whatnot. So I guess that's what's been popping lately. That's what's been making me known in the Battlefront Two community, at least. So I can say right now I'm kind of chilling. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that's good. Um, so I guess to start this off, um. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your channel is about? Um, so, <clears throat> about myself, uh, I am known as Ro, but I did go by various different gamer tags. I'm not going to get into that, but like I said, uh, um, Ro, you know, I play Battlefront. Uh, you know, uh, I like it. That's the game I've been playing most of. So, uh, I don't know if you asking me like you want like my live questions, but I guess I can go into as... Um, Hispanic, you know, I am 20 and I play Battlefront. As for my channel, uh, it was a bit of a rocky start, uh, struggling uh, with my identity on YouTube, finding out what I really wanted to do. You know, <clears throat> when I first started it, I actually like really liked Filthy Frank. I don't know if you guys know him, so I did like weird videos like that. Yeah, I know him. And yeah, I'd say until I got to like 50 subs, then after that, I switched it to straight Call of Duty because when Modern Warfare 2019 came out, I was uh, I got really good at sniper one v oneing and whatnot, so I would literally grind my subs by like making group posts for sniper one v ones, and every time I would like whoop somebody's ass, I would just plug my channel. So I probably did that till I got to like a hundred and twenty subs, huh. and then after that I got into like card unboxings. I was unboxing like Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh cards in my channel for a little while. Like I said, yeah, I did struggle with my identity at first and what I really wanted to do because I switched my channel up so much. So, right when I got around 130 subs is when I uh, started doing Battlefront stuff because I've been on Battlefront for a while, since 2019, and that whole time while I was, like, struggling with my identity for my channel, I've been playing Battlefront, and I just figured, you know, I really like this game, I want to make content on it, you know, might as well, I'm pretty decent at it. So, I, around 130 subs is when I fully started with uh, Battlefront on my channel, and it's just been going ever since. Uh, we're at 273 subs as of now, and I appreciate everybody that supports me. So that's a little bit of history about my channel that not a lot of people know. Very nice. Okay, so that leaves me to ask the <clears throat> next question. Um, what made you come to Battlefront 2? Um, well, I've always been a Star Wars fan, you know, uh, when I lived with my grandma, uh, we had a bunch of cousins and stuff went up, we were all pretty much Star Wars fans. Uh, we did have the original Battlefront 2 for PlayStation 2, and I played that a lot, that was probably one of my favorite games, uh, I'd say Nintendo 64 is also my favorite, but, uh, Battlefront 2, I've always been a Star Wars fan, I've watched Star Wars movies, why not, and I remember my cousin one day told me about it, uh, Battlefront 2. And I decided to give it a try, and I pretty much liked it from there. And that was in September of 2019. So, so thanks to my cousin is the reason why I'm on Battlefront. So, like, just the just the just a fan of the movies, or or a fan of the expanded universe? Uh, the fan of like all of Star Wars. Like, I, I've loved Star Wars since I was little, dude. Very nice. Okay. Well. <laughs> Well, I kind of was going to ask the next question of what game you was on before Battlefront 2, but I think you already kind of explained that whenever you told us about yourself. So, yeah, I can, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, here, I, I, Yeah, I want to add some uh, pretty interesting. So <clears throat> I didn't start online gaming till 2017, uh, in August 2017, because uh, I was still a teenager. I was still in high school, or I was just getting into high school. And at the time, my stepdad... Uh, he bought me a Xbox One S, and the first game I picked up was Dark Souls 3, because uh, my, one of my other cousins introduced me to the Dark Souls series. And so, yeah, that was the actual first game I was playing, pretty competitive on it, you know, I was pretty well known over there. 
remember people would boot me offline and shit over there on Dark Souls 3, so, but yeah, before yeah. I came to Battlefront, it was Dark Souls 3 and then Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. Hmm, okay. So, now that now that we know a little bit about you and what games you were on, um, let's go ahead and get into Battlefront 2. So, w what game modes do you like the most in Battlefront 2? <clears throat> I will say I like Hero Showdown the most. I'm not going to say ones because there isn't a such game mode, but Hero Showdown, I definitely love my 1v1s. That's what a lot of people, most people know me for. And then when I'm really feeling it, Capital Supremacy, it really hits home, you know, because of the original Battlefront, too. Yeah, because of the Clone Wars feel, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> All right, if you had to choose one, which one would be your favorite game mode on Battlefront 2 and why? I said Capital Supremacy. Oh, okay. Oh, um, don't oh okay. Get me wrong. Mm -hmm. My bad, my bad. Okay. <laughs> I kind of, oh, I kind of had you repeat yourself a little bit, but um, all right. Well then, um, let's see. What's your favorite class in Capital Supremacy, and why? Officer, just because you can rack up the points, and if you really know what you're doing, you can get the hero. And like I said, if you know what you're doing, you can load your top board, so people can see my nice big fat name in first place at the end of the match. Wasn't that? Wasn't that supposed to be nerfed, though? I thought they nerfed that a while back. With the officer and the points and everything? Yes. I, I like I said, I played in 2019, so I didn't play in the beginning, but I just know as of now, officer is the best way to get to get heroes early off the start because they have cards that give you battle points for, like, getting kills and getting damage. Okay. So, all right, so you've discussed your favorite class. Um... What's your favorite hero and villain in Capital Supremacy, and why? So, I like, the only era I don't really like is the the Empire area. I don't, I'm not sure what they exactly call it, but it's the Rebels Empire. Only because of the fact is they don't have a second phase. So, for the Clone Wars and the sequel era, I like both of them. Uh, but I gotta go with the Clone Wars more. I think Maul is definitely really nice to use for the dark side just because he has his push and he's really fast and has a lot of agility around the map to get kills. <clears throat> and for the light side, I'd say Yoda's pretty good. He has his healing, Anakin. I'd say Obi-Wan really isn't as useful as Anakin and Yoda, but I'd say Anakin's definitely the top dog for the light side for capital supremacy. Hmm. What's your, imp um, what's your opinion about... Uh... Palpatine and Vader in those modes. I ain't gonna lie, Palpatine. If you don't, if you really know what you're doing, Palpatine can be a menace, and you can definitely top board with him. But let's say for like the average Joe, no, Palpatine's just not viable. He can get shot up. He doesn't have a block. So true. I mean, I've seen, Vader? I've seen video, yeah, I've seen videos where people go in like two and three hundred kill streaks with uh, Palpatine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're like also really talented players. You gotta look in the eyes of just like regular, everyday players. I just want to play for fun. Very true. But for Vader, I don't really play the Empire mode that much. But Vader can be pretty good, especially with the right cards. Right. Okay. So, all right, this one's gonna be one I think most of the people who play Capital Supremacy, GA, and all that in general. Um, would like to hear your opinion on how do you feel about the door trap in capital supremacy door trap yeah you know like whenever you kill an enemy and then like you know you didn't realize it and uh the door closes behind you and it won't reopen oh and, yeah yeah that can be pretty annoying and you're stuck in like the um the count yeah. the countdown and it'll kill you yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I don't think it needs fix because, you know, it's just the way it was designed. You know, you got to hurry your ass up and get to the next objective. So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I'm all right with it. But it can't suck when, like, say, if something buggy, you know, Battlefront's always buggy. So, if something like that affects it, then, yeah. Like, what really? Pretty... Yeah, like, what really sucks about it a lot is whenever you're on a high kill streak and that happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that just sucks. It feels terrible. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, let's see here. How do you feel about the explosive shot in Capital Supremacy? Explosive shot. That's you know, the, the heavy, the heavy cl class, right? Yeah, the heavy class, and I do, and I think the um, officer also has a variation of it. Well, I only use the battle points cards for the officer, but I tried it on the heavy. I I really don't find it that useful. At first, I thought it was gonna be like items, but it's pretty trash in my opinion. Was you here um, before it got nerfed? 2019, right? No. Yeah, but I started September 2019. Okay, well, let's just put it like this. Back in the day, um, before they nerfed it, you could literally melt Vader with one with one heavy class trooper with explosive shot. <laughs> oh, goodness. At, you know, I actually uh, never heard of that before. Like, uh, what it did was, it was literally, uh, you know, it hits you through your block. Like, you could be there with Vader and you'll be blocking, and the damage literally, the explosion damage, the area um, of effect was basically, mm -hmm. it was so strong, it was literally melting Vader. <laughs> you know, while he was blocking. Mm -hmm. So well, I feel it, like now they nerfed it into the ground, but I guess that's probably why it's so shit now. Then, right. I mean, at least I don't have a use for it, but other people. Yeah. Have it. Okay. Um, do you think there is a class in Capital Supremacy that is superior to other classes? I say the officer. Uh, the the. I, I'm bad with naming the guns, but damn it. Let me hop on the game real quick. Bro. I have, have a serious X. Take me a minute. Okay. All right, hold on. I'm right here. So for the officer, the SE 44C, that gun can fucking shred, dude. That one will melt. It'll get you the points you need to get that hero. Right. So. Yeah, that's one of them a lot of people were using back in the day with explosive shot was the, the SE 44C, <laughs> and it was just mm -hmm. destroying everything. <laughs> Especially if you get the rapid fire, it really makes the thing lethal. Right. Okay. Um, what is your favorite special reinforcement in Capital Supremacy and why? Ooh, I got to go with... I don't really play them that much, but I gotta go with the Ewok, dude, just cause, like, it's funny. They got aim assist with the bows. Like, aim lock on, I'd say. It ain't really aim assist. It's literally you just go in the direction and you shoot and it'll hit. Right. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it honestly, whenever it came to, like, Ewok Hunt, for example, I thought that was a really fun mode. Um, yeah, it's fun, but you gotta have, like, the boys playing with you. I yeah, about soloing it. I just liked it because, like, you know, it was dark. I mean, if you really looked at it, you know, the Ewoks are supposed to be cannibals and stuff. It, you know, mm -hmm. in in the dark um, on indoor, it actually had a little bit of a like. I'm not gonna say it was like straight up horrific, but it had a little scare factor to it. Oh yeah, <laughs> especially because you can't see nothing. Right. The, the, the stormtroopers. Right. Okay, so the next question is, do you think the maps in Capital Supremacy are balanced and fair for both sides, and why? Uh, personally, me, I, I don't ever have a problem with the maps other than Felicia, and that's mainly both sides because I don't know what it is with that map, whether it's all the vegetation on the map, why not fucking with, like, the frame rate, but that's the whole point, the frame rate, dude. It's so bad on that map. Everything is just really laggy. Other than that, I don't really have a problem with any other maps. But for that one, Felicia, it just seems like it's a mess. And I will say Kashyyyk. I don't like that map, dude. I mean, it's the maps are pretty balanced. I don't really see, like, one-sided. I mean, I could be wrong. But like I said, I, I don't know. That's just me. Kashyyyk is just too much shit going on. I think the framework's pretty bad on that map, too. I think it's, um, I think it's more of a... Um... I guess you could say maybe on the graphics end. I don't necessarily think it's on the server end, but I think, you know, there's just so many, so much clutter, items, objects on the map, along with the graphics and everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, the older systems, they're going to, they're obviously going to struggle with it. You know what I mean? I think that's, mm -hmm. I think that's more of the primary issue. I mean, I play on Series X and Lucia and Kashyyyk are just the two maps that really fuck with the frame rate. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Do you feel like capital supremacy is lacking anything that could make it better? Uh, ships that you don't spawn in with, ships that you can just run up to and get in. Same with like the the starships or whatever they like to call them. I don't know exact names, but uh, I think that's something that can definitely uh, make it better and that it is lacking. I also think like ground to space battles where you could just say like if you do get in a ship, you fly to space, or say you spawn in space from like a hangar bay, you could go down and join the battle that's fighting on the ground, and like both would kind of play off each other to space and the ground battle, kind of detect the the I'm not I don't know the word I'm looking for, but kind of. Both working together to see what they need to win, if that makes sense. But there, there's so much that they could add, dude. More reinforcements and whatnot from like the movies, the shows. I definitely agree. There, I feel like there was, like you said, there was so many more things that they could have brought into the game that that the previous Battlefront two had. But they, mm -hmm. there were like a, there was so many things that they said they were gonna bring, but never did. You know what I mean? Well, I think another thing, I know it was in the original Battlefront 2, but it was only on some maps. There, it was basically like three sides. It would be like the the two, let's say like the clones versus the droids, and then there would be a third, and it would be like the creatures that live on that planet, whether it be the fucking, you know, the, the big Primantis creatures from Felucia, and then the, the I can't remember the names, dude, but the pig creatures from like Jawa's Palace, if you ever played the original Battlefront 2, <laughs> they would go around attacking both sides. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, if they added more, like, environmental stuff in the maps, like, whether it be creatures or just, like, shit that can harm you in general or more stuff to interact with, I think that would also be a game changer. Right. Okay. So, with that being said, do you think the current Battlefront 2 is better than the previous Battlefront 2? And if so, why? This is going to be a controversial... I've played both of them for a while, but I think the new Battlefront 2 is better. Do you think that... Surely it's... Oh, go, go ahead. Um, surely it's... Uh, I know that the new Battlefront's lacking a bunch of content, but um, in my opinion, I, I don't know. Like This might be cliche, but I find myself enjoying the new Battlefront 2 a lot more than the old one, but the old one is still really good. Don't get me wrong. Like I, There's days where I'll just go back and play like HVV and whatnot. Uh, a big thing that plagued the old one too is it was really unbalanced. I mean, the new one still has its fair share, but you could like spam force choke or force pull, force push constantly. There's really nothing you can do about it in the old game. I mean, right. The new one, the graphics are clearly nicer, but that's, I know that's kind of wrong to say because they both came out in their own times and both mm -hmm. had good graphics for their times. Right. So oh, I'm trying to think. So basically what I'm getting at is you think there, um, you could correct me if I'm wrong. You think there's aspects of the OG Battlefront 2 that were, that they got right, that Battlefront 2 2017 got wrong. And then there's aspects of 2017 Battlefront 2 they got right where the OG Battlefront 2 got wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So basically it's like a yes and no, uh, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, here, I, I can get into a little bit of depth, so that way, I, like, for people that's watching, just kind of wondering what I'm talking about. I think for HVV, they really did improve on that, because in the previous game, like I said, there was just a bunch of guys running around spamming force moves. And uh, this one, it's actually got a lot more mechanics and teamwork to actually play off of. Uh, I actually like how they handled HVV in this game. <clears throat> and for the old game, I like how you was able to get in ships and whatnot. There was more map versatility in the old one. I mean, that's kind of a setback for this game. I mean, they still got it, but, like, they got a whole point system there, whatnot, that you got to do to actually spawn in uh, into the ship instead of rather getting into it. But, yeah, I, I think the new Battlefront 2 is better, but they're both good. Okay. So, now that we've covered quite a bit of Capital Supremacy, I want to ask you, um, what do you think about the comp community of Battlefront 2? I think... The comp community is like a hurting soul, you know, it's there. People really want to be competitive, but because of the lack of effort put into any sort of comp and on EA's part, you know, it kind of hurts. And I believe that leaves a sour taste on a lot of the people that are just naturally competitive and were thriving for the competitive. I guess Hero Shutdown was kind of their comp thing they had going on a little bit. Like if you, <clears throat> if you hover over Hero Shutdown, 
the description says Star Wars most iconic character pair up against each other in 2v2 elimination showdowns and saying you must work together to survive. So I feel like they was kind of going for a more comp side on the hero showdown game mode. But I think we still should have had our 1v1s. But in order for them to do that, they would have definitely had to go more in depth on mechanics and whatnot instead of what it is now. Kind of like, uh, like, a, like, do you think it would be better with like a mechanic like For Honor? I haven't really played For Honor. I've seen a little bit of it, but I can say like more combo systems, kind of like Fall in Order or like well, the new Lego Star Wars. Well, I'll put it like this. Um, basically, For Honor had a directional blocking mechanic where you could block left or you could block right, up or down. That was with the analog stick, right? Yes, with the right stick, yes. Yeah, I've um, seen a little bit of it. And um, basically, if you timed it right, it would uh, allow you and it, it had an actual parry mechanic. It wasn't just, mm -hmm. you know, hold the block and time the right trigger. <laughs> you yeah. know, it was actually timed, uh, timed parry to where it would stagger the opponent and you could get like a free hit or, or something like that. Um, so you think that would be uh, a better mechanic? with the way that battlefront two works considering like for example capital supremacy right you go in there you got blaster shots coming from 20 different directions you know a hero to, a hero or a villain to fight at the same time on top of directional blocking and parry uh-huh do you think that mechanic um, would work in a battlefront game i mean i could see people saying yes i mean Personally, I think yes, but I wouldn't like it to be honest. I like the game how it is now with the parry mechanic and whatnot. I think it's got a pretty different mechanic, even though it's broken. I just think they should focus more on like combos. I mean, that's what it's really lacking at the end of the day, because you know, for the lack of combos, uh, combos in this game, it makes up for broken exploits. I guess that's what fills the role of the no combos really in Battlefront 2, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, with that being said, then, what do you enjoy about the 1v1 aspect of Battlefront 2? <clears throat> Getting a win, man. Just straight dominating on somebody. Just the win win aspect of actually winning a 1v1. Uh, it's pretty thriving. I feel like that's what keeps me going. Hmm. Okay. Um, do you think the 1v1 aspect of Battlefront 2 is balanced and fair for both sides? And if so, why? I think it's definitely got its flaws, but we've definitely, the community has come together and figure out balance or try to make it as balanced as possible. But, you know, there's definitely those characters that need nerfs, like Vader. I Personally, I think Obi-Wan should be nerfed. His health regen and just stamina is ridiculous. What is it and, like? What is it like? 450 health regen or something like that? Yeah, dude, he just dominates with his stamina. He can literally just sit back. And you know most of the people that are really good at the game, if they bring out Obi-Wan, they're going to win most of the time. Other yeah. than that, I feel like there's characters that are all right, but definitely weaker than others. Uh, Vader definitely needs a hard nerf. Obi-Wan needs a slight stamina nerf. I think it would be okay. Uh, Yoda definitely... I think to make Yoda balance, they should definitely make him do more damage to counter his openness when he swings. Because if you really know what you're doing, you can get two to three hits in when Yoda swings, and it's pretty bad. So. Right. I mean, you would think for somebody with Form Four Ataru, which is supposed to speed enhance your your speed and your attacks and reflexes, that he would be a you know a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah. But um, okay. So, do you think that? Ping difference can make some players perform better th than others in a 1v1? Yes, because of the parry mechanic that they got going on. It's not the greatest, but... I mean, we all know if you play 1v1s or just HPV in general, Saber modes, you know ping and it really fucks with parries hard. So, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I'm not in that depth on knowledge of, like, ping-wise and whatnot, but it definitely does affect it. Would you say, um, whenever it comes to the parry mechanic and the ping difference, that it would have to do with delay in um, attack and block registration? Yeah, and it's just like broken. It's got broken hitboxes, so when you're lagging around, it's really going to mess with you hard. Okay. So, all right. 
How do you feel about the character exploits in Battlefront 2? Yeah, like I said, I mean, I think some of them are pretty good, and it's actually kind of cool that they've been found out. But some are just... They're not really... They could just be fixed, basically, like hooks. It's just the broken hitboxes that some players can get on you. It's just really annoying, and it's just like, how does this even hit me when you're not even near me because the hitbox is so broken? You know what I mean? Yeah, like how they can hit you without even looking your direction kind of thing. Yeah. Or I say lunges are fine. I mean, I haven't really encountered anything that just makes them so game-breaking. Just because like it, they actually take kind of skill because you got to keep your reticle and you got to actually aim to get the lunge off. I say it's really hooks that are the biggest thing that really ruins it. I mean, just because of those janky hitboxes that just, yeah. I agree with that because um, the the way the game works, you know what? Actually, there's it's it's going to be controversial, so I'm just going to skip it. <laughs> um, okay. How do you feel about the game-breaking bugs that never received a patch in Battlefront 2? Uh, you gotta help me out here. What bugs are you looking for? In like, 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 when I say game-breaking, uh, well, I, I think I should say more of game mechanic-breaking, uh, such as, like, Anakin's heroic might bug. Like, you'll get stuck in it, or sometimes it... Also, like, star cards and stuff. Stuff like that, okay. Yeah, I think that... Yeah, I don't know why they never fixed that. I'm pretty sure that was complained a lot on. It does really put a negative mark, like a nasty taste in my mouth. And I feel like, not just for me, other players too. Like you said, that Anakin heroic might glitch. Like, you'll be 1v1ing and you go to pull it off when you have the perfect opportunity to combo with Anakin with his force moves. There's nothing you can do, because literally you're just standing there like a dumbass. You can't even block or anything, so you just get mashed on. Right. I think another one... Go ahead. Uh, I mean, we already touched on it, but Yoda, I don't, I don't know if it's like a, a bug that they left in to make him that slow or whatnot, but yeah, he's like janky. Now, I know there's the Ray Opportunist bug where she only does like what, like one damage, maybe four damage. That card like bugs out. Yeah. I know then there's the Luke one where he can dash between Grievous block and hit him every time. So there's definitely those bugs that make the game pretty ruined and. I guess I can go more into broken exploits, so yeah. Yeah. So you were talking about the hook swings because the reason I want to bring this up is because you know like how you could hold forward. Like if you if you just go up to somebody and hold forward, there's there's a physic, right, that that kind of holds you back, right? Mm -hmm. But you notice whenever it comes to the hook swing, it literally jumps right through them, as in the the physics just disappear. Mm -hmm. That's one of the primary reasons that I say that it's more of an exploit than a tactic. Is because whenever you're whenever you're moving normally, you know you can go up to them and you'll get like um, kind of like a little bit of a pushback physics. But whenever you do a jump swing or a hook swing. Uh, it literally negates the physics and goes right through them and like literally um you know it, it's it'll it, it sometimes hits them out of range and sometimes it just hits them through their block regardless sometimes you can hit them without mm -hmm. even looking at them once again that does involve hitbox but it yeah it negates the physics of the characters that's one reason i say that it's um a um, exploit more than a tactic yeah i think certain characters also the way they're just designed them like they each have their own little hitboxes so that's kind of goes more into play that what can make it broken with the swings. but yeah i think also just ping like having different ping like you said i think that also fucks with the hitting through people shit and whatnot like the blocks i mean hook swings are probably like the most broken aspect in 1v1s i'd say I agree. Uh, there's other people that would debate you on that and say, oh, oh yeah, for sure. I know they would talk about lunges or just the character cards and or they would, character matchups. Or they'll tell you, well, just simply blo uh, dodge. Yeah. Yeah, you do that and you still get hit probably like two times. However, the thing they don't take into account 
is whenever somebody actually knows when to apply the hook swings. It's not like you're just going to, you know, good players, they're not just going to stand there and repeatedly try to, well, what I mean, not stand there, but they're not just going to repeatedly, you know, try to hit you with hook swing after hook swing after hook swing, especially if you're punishing them. They're going to time it. They're going to they're going to try to throw you off and, you know, they're going to switch it up a little bit here and there or they're going to try to pressure mm-hmm. you, pressure your stamina, you know, or something along those lines. So it's not simply just, oh, dodge. There's more to it than that, because they could be trying to, for example, cost you to use up all your dodges and whenever you have no way to dodge then then they could go for it or you could it could result in a trade you know but still yeah if you're hitting them from the back you're gonna you're still gonna do more damage than them than the person who just parries you mm-hmm. you know or or just hits you if it's a trade you're still gonna do more damage than them because yours is an attack from the front and theirs is hitting you in the back, which does basically more points of damage. Yeah. And that could, that can, that would be, you know, like for example, a Dooku, for example, he could literally hit you one time in the back and take like 200, 250 of your health away. He could, you know, mm-hmm. so there's some characters that are only going to do what 1200 1300 damage 1500 damage whereas dooku can do 200 and 250 on that one hook swing which completely you know can set the match in his favor especially if they don't have a high amount of health regen like luke or ray or somebody along those lines mm-hmm. yeah i see what you're saying okay so with that being said um what is your opinion of the developers that worked on Battlefront 2? I think they did a good job. I mean, what they were able to do, like, we all pretty much know that EA, I don't know what they were thinking, but they, like, I don't know how to explain it. Basically, EA fucked DICE, but I think DICE really turned the game around because EA pretty much left it to die, and DICE picked up the pieces and actually brought this game together. Even though there could have been a lot more shit added, but well, I think Dice did the well, best they could. Well, the thing about it is, EA is just the publisher. Dice are the ones who's responsible for the bug fixes, the game mechanics. EA had nothing to do with that. All, <laughs> all they have, all they really play a part is, is like marketing decisions or you know, you, you know, publishing and stuff like that. They don't, they don't have anything to do with the game, the bug fixes or any of the balancing mm-hmm. it that's that's all on dice yeah I, I see what you're saying but if they gotta work on a tight schedule like what ea had then that could kind of go into play because that you got to think the the development team was split between uh two games probably even more we don't know but they were split between making battlefield and finishing up uh battlefront so i guess it it could go both ways yeah right Okay, um, if there was anything you could change or add to Battlefront 2, what would it be? Mm. I think add, I would probably, to be honest, this might be controversial, but I would probably add a Battle Pass. Uh, only for the fact is that they could add like so many cool skins from like the comics or whatnot for certain characters, comics, movies. They add like characters in the in the battle pass. I think now's a definitely a good time for battle passes. You know, I think battle passes are dex- definitely the wave to go. Other than microtransactions, like what they had before, and pay to unlock shit. <clears throat> um, they could definitely add more characters. Everybody knows that. I mean, I'm not gonna get into that because, like, like I said, everybody literally knows that they could add more characters. But I think for fixing, just. Start with the star cards first and balancing characters, I think, is their biggest thing before they need to go fixing little shit. Like, as as much as we hate hook swings and the broken hitboxes and whatnot, I think they should definitely focus on balancing characters and fixing the broken star cards. So, I, I definitely agree with you on a battle pass. For example, like, there's so many skins that they could have gave us for for certain characters that they never gave us. They could have gave us, like, a Damage Vader skin, a hooded Darth Maul, you name it. They're... Luke's yellow lightsaber from the comics, just to get more in-depth. 
Yeah, you know, they even they could have even came out with their own skins like they did with uh, Grievous, you know, like a, a dark side Luker, you know, it just just something, you know, for, you know, a cool cosmetic. I don't I don't think mm-hmm. I don't think uh, the battle pass should include XP boosters or anything like that. But Mm-mm. definitely, if it was purely cosmetics, I would 100 percent agree with that. Mm-hmm. OK. This one's going to be one um, I think you would like to answer, and I think a lot of people would like to hear. Um, which character in Battlefront 2 do you think deserved a fourth ability and why? Are you here? Ro? Hello? Yo, hello? Uh, yeah. Yeah, my bad. My controller shut off and my headset kind of went off. Uh, I have my other mic in, so if it's like buzzing, just let me know. But uh, uh, can you repeat the question? I said, which character in Battlefront 2 do you think deserved a fourth ability and why? Um, oh, man. Um, trying to, let me think. I know I've thought about this before. I just can't think off the top of my head. But I know what you're talking about, like Anakin's, uh, kind of like his yeah. retribution. Yeah. I think Ray definitely, just so she wouldn't fully play off of her dash strike. Uh, maybe she could do like Force Lightning from like the movies, and it'll be a cool ability to just shoot lightning out for the fourth ability. You don't think mm. you don't think Palpatine or Vader deserved a fourth ability? I mean, Palpatine got the lightning and everything going on. I mean, I think he's good. Vader, I think he's good too. I think characters. I think. I mean, everybody could add a fourth move to make them more in depth. I think that would definitely change up the gameplay. I just can't really think off the top of my head other than Ray, uh, Kylo. Probably his force healing. I think that would be kind of cool if they did that from the movies. Like, how badass would it be? If Palpatine had a fourth ability, you you build up this meter, and now like for this duration, he has he pulls out two lightsabers. Yeah, that would be cool. <clears throat> or something along those lines, or or even if it was Vader building up a meter, and he basically gets the the Anakin ability. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure, he's overpowered now, but I'm just saying, like. If you're going based off the character's potential in the movies and everything like that, you know, I just thought mm-hmm. Palpatine and Vader would have made the most sense to get a fourth ability. You know, but I do agree that, you know, it would be better if every character in the game got a fourth ability. I 100% yeah, agree with that. Change it up. Okay. Um, how did it make you feel when we got... BB-8 and BB-90 instead of Ahsoka and Ventress. I mean, I would prefer Ahsoka and Ventress just to have the extra lightsabers for like 1v1s because it's annoying in 2v2s having to go a blaster. But I actually like the droids. I feel like it just wasn't the right time to add them in, especially knowing the state of the game and what they could have done. But the droids are definitely unique characters. They are first very unique characters. And I think they progressed a long way. People started seeing how OP they were from the start because everybody thought they were shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I like them. Yeah, they were. They're definitely very good support <laughs> roles for sure. I mean, BB-8, shit, he can do so much damage; it's ridiculous. Yeah, I think BB-9 needs a buff, but I'm not gonna get full into it. But yeah, I think it was just the wrong time to bring them in. But right. They're, they're good. Okay. So with that being said, if you could add any characters in the Star Wars universe to Battlefront 2, who would you add? <laughs> who uh, who would they be and why? You already know I gotta go with Qui Gon Jinn. Uh, ever since I was little, he was just always my favorite character. Uh, fun fact: my favorite Star Wars movie is The Phantom Menace. So I would go with Qui Gon Jinn. Um, let's see who else. I think Savage Opress, uh, Darth Maul's brother. I don't know if I butchered that name. I think he would be cool. Savage Opress. Adventurous. Yeah, Savage Opress. I think he would be cool. Uh, I think... I didn't watch all the uh, Clone Wars, but I think the Mandalorian... I think his name was Count Vizsla, the guy that Darth Maul killed and got the Darksaber. I think he would kind of be a cool hero. Right. I like to have in there with the Darksaber and whatnot. 
How would you feel about like, let's say, you know, um, old Republic characters? Oh yeah, I actually had conversations with my friends a lot about this. I don't feel like they would fit with Skywalker style characters. So I think if they made like a spinoff Battlefront, just all old Republic, I think that'd be much better. But are, I wouldn't be opposed to having them combine with uh, Skywalker characters. What about Darth Plagueis? Uh, so yeah, he, he, like I said, all all of them would be sick to have in the game. But I just I think it would be weird having all of them mashed in with uh, you know different eras. Yeah, yeah, that would that would be awesome as as an idea for a new Star Wars game, having uh, you know different eras. Um, all the way from the old republic all the way to you know the galactic empire you know stuff like that <laughs> all, all the way up to you know well, Kylo. I even said if they made a battlefront 3 i mean who, who's to say it is or isn't in the works i'm not holding my head up but i star wars new love child definitely that they're working on is the high republic so now would be the perfect time to make money off of the disney shows that's been going on like mando content bolo content High Republic content, they could literally make so much money off of Battlefront 3. So. Agreed. Um, okay. Here, I think this is a legitimate question to ask. Um, do you think Battlefront 2 is 100% dead and, impro in, and impossible to grow a channel on? <clears throat> so, I think Battlefront 2 is at a stalemate. Uh, I don't think it's dead. You can still find your games. Why not? I say the PC aspect's probably the most dead part. Uh, PlayStation is definitely active. I think you could definitely Battlefront. Such a this is how I word it. Battlefront such a small bubble that pretty much anybody that makes a Battlefront or a video on Battlefront they can get a decent amount of views on it. I think you could grow a channel for Battlefront, but nothing too major to the point where you're really rich and successful off of. But you definitely get a fan base. So basically what you're saying is it would be a, a decent place to start with. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I, I don't know what it is with the algorithm, but YouTube seems to push out anything Battlefront. So. Yeah, I've noticed that. I think maybe because there's not very many people on it, um, you know, mm -hmm. the smaller channels can get noticed more whereas a more popular game there's going to be so many videos being put out on it all the popular youtubers are all over it you know yeah, video, videos the, videos are yeah. being dished out left and right and yours is just gonna probably be like pushed to the bottom of the list especially people with paid promotions or you know the google ads or or whatever that they're using to push theirs ahead of everybody else's video mm -hmm. yeah i agree Okay. So, if they make a Battlefront 3, will you be on it? Will I be on it? Yes. Will you play it? For sure. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I just hope that they don't change it too much from 2. But yeah. I would... Oh yeah, for sure. I have to make a lot of content. Okay, then. Okay. If EA makes the next Battlefront 3, will you be on it? <laughs> yes. I feel like it's very controversial, but I feel like DICE has a good, I don't know how to word it. I feel like they got a good game going on. It just needs so much more to improve and fix. But I feel like they've got the recipe down for a really good Battlefront. Mm, okay. Yeah, I kind of agree with that in a way. I just think there's minor touch-ups they need to do to it to, you know, because for one, like how we mentioned the hook swings, right? Like, let's be honest, mm -hmm. before the hook swings were a thing, um, and before parries was a thing, um, it was basically mirror matching staring contests. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, who could dodge behind who. And, I mean, you had to be more creative. I, I, I'll say that much. Yeah. Okay. So, with that being said, um, this one, I don't necessarily, well, it, I'm, it might be Battlefront 2 related. Um, so, in a previous podcast, you said I was your favorite channel for Battlefront 2 content. So, what made you like my channel and how did you find it? <clears throat> so, I found it because of the Battlefront night. Like, he featured you in the video, so I thought I would check you out. And... Uh, I liked how you did your challenges and whatnot, and I ain't gonna lie to you, I didn't watch every video, I just kind of got to know you a little bit, and 
I was like, damn, I wish I could have met him before he quit. And funny enough, you know, we met in a game, and then kind of here we are. Yeah, very true. Um, hmm. Okay. So, is there anything that you would like to say before we end this video? Mm hmm. I say have fun with Battlefront 2. I mean, it definitely is a game that I don't see it hanging on for too many more years, but it's definitely fun while it lasts. You'll definitely have a lot of great moments and uh, fun on it. Uh, you know, it's definitely on a toxic side, but if you can look past that, it's definitely one of those gems that we all know could have been so much more, but you'll definitely have fun on it. So. Hmm. All right. Well... I want to thank you for coming on to my channel and um, doing this uh, podcast with me. Um, mm -hmm. I will put the link to your channel in the description of this video. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is basically going to be all for this video. If you like the video, then please give me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to Rose channel, share the video, hit that notification bell. And I will see you in my next video.